Well, recently I've been seeing a lot of tote bags with applique names and letters on them. And uh, I was so excited because I knew I had everything I needed to make them myself. And uh, so right here I have a little project and I wanted to show you how I'm going to utilize and use some of the software that came with my uh, sewing and embroidery machine, my designer Ruby. Um, and I didn't have to buy it or anything, it just came with it. And it's called the Quick Font, the 4D Quick Font program. And I just wanted to show you how I was going to use it to create my applique outfit then. Because you can create your own if you have the software or you have one of these great machines. And so right here what I have is my fabric already hooped the beginning of my tote bag. And I have uh, already stuck some... Oh, permanent cutaway stabilizer to it and it is a nice soft and sheer uh, by Sulky. That's exactly what it's called, Sulky Soft and Sheer. And I'm just going to go through and make sure that it's nice taut hooping and uh, I already have it where I know the embroidery is going to go. And then to go on top I have a little scrap of fabric that I have and I'm just going to lay it right on top but it's a really nice pink fabric and it's going to become the applique leathers. And uh, I threaded my machine with a nice pink thread and I have a bobbin all ready to go. But I'm just going to step over to my computer and show you how I'm going to make all this happen. So I'm going to go ahead and open my 4D quick font. And you see right away you get this screen and you can choose any font up here and from any of the true type fonts in your computer. And I have already selected curls because this is for my little niece, baby Inez. And I'm going to go and check my style. Do I want it regular, bold, italic, bold, italic? And I think I'm going to go ahead and click bold just to give me a really nice bold outline. And character set, uh, western one, I'm just going to leave that alone. Design Ruby, that's my sewing machine. And go ahead and click next. And here's where you can click the stitch type. If you just want a satin stitch or a fill stitch or fill in a satin border or a satin border. And I've already selected applique right here. Or you could do an outline and give yourself a raw edge applique, or you could even do applique with a raw edge if you wanted. But here's where you can choose your output size, and I want these to be fairly large letters. So I'm going to go ahead, scroll all the way up, and see how high I can get. That's close, 4.724. That's as big as I can make these letters, and that's as big as I want them. So you can go ahead and preview everything if you want, that's what they'll look like, and you can click next. And it's creating all my alphabet, all my letters. So now you can either send it to your machine, and I don't want to do that, I want to go ahead and click the save font file, and I already checked it, and uh, here's what it will be called, curls MT, and that's the file name, but click these three dots, and they've already put in the memory stick that came with my sewing machine. So what I'm going to do is select it over here, make sure it's selected, the removal disk, and there's all my embroidery files so I know this is it. I'm just going to look at the file name so I can remember it when I uh, look, or you could even rename it right here if you wanted. I'm just going to go ahead and click save, and then click next, and finish, and you're all done. So you've saved it to your memory stick, and what I'm going to do right now is go and get my Ruby in position, and uh, install the hoop and everything, and get you ready to see just how this is going to happen. I'm going to take my memory stick out and uh, put it in my machine now. So I'll be right back. Okay, so now I'm going to show you how you go about getting the alphabet font off of your memory stick and into your sewing machine. And um, I've already put in my memory stick and I'm just going to go up here to my little heart and choose my folder. Instead of going to the fonts, I'm going to go into the folder. And choose your USB option and there's your memory stick. You click the open icon, wait for it to open and then scroll down until you find your file. And there it is, curled empty, and you can see the outline font. So just go ahead and press OK. And now you're going to go straight into the font or the um, monogramming menu. And sometimes it takes a second for it to load. And from here, you might recognize the screen. This is exactly how you create a monogram. But notice it's your font that you created. So I need an I, and then I need to go into the lowercase N E S for little baby Inez. And there we go. And just go ahead and click OK. And now you can see all your stitches. And I need to go into my 360 by 200 hoop and see it. And now from here I'm going to go ahead and select these rotating arrows and rotate it 90 degrees until it is the way I want it. And now I'm going to go ahead and click the directional buttons again. 
so I can move it on the screen. I'm just going to go ahead and move it with my stylus and fine tune it with my arrows as I always like to do. And you can go ahead and click go. And it is all ready to stitch. Now what I'm going to do with this fabric right here is take some of my temporary spray adhesive and get out my little spray box. Try not to lose everything in my toolkit. That's never good. But I'm just going to go ahead and spray some temporary spray adhesive all on this just to keep it away from my machine as much as possible. So I'm even going to spray in another direction. Because you're not really supposed to spray the temporary spray adhesive around your machine unless you want to risk getting some on it. But anyway, so here we go. I'm just going to go ahead and click down. Put this right down into the area where my applique is going to go because the first thing that's going to happen is you're going to get an outline stitch. And smooth it out. Make sure there are no air bubbles anywhere. All right, so you can go ahead and see you have your four letters, four different color blocks. And you don't want to ever hit your color merge here. You never want to do that because that will mess up the applique. There are stop commands and things that you want to pay attention to. But I'm going to go ahead and press start and you'll see the first thing that's going to happen is I'm going to get the outline, which is going to tack down my applique fabric into place. So you want to make sure you've positioned it correctly. If you need to go into design positioning, now's the time to do it before you start. All right, now see here is the stop command in design. So this is where you're going to go and take your, uh, your duckbill applique scissors and go in and carefully trim away. And remember, you don't want to trim too much fabric away from the side of the eye because you're going to need that. But you carefully trim away, and I love these duckbill applique scissors, any of the excess fabric around the eye. Okay, so once you've gone ahead and trimmed around your entire applique, and sometimes to make it easier, you can take the hoop off. Uh, you don't have to keep it in, but the duckbill applique with uh, scissors are something that I really love when I do applique. So what I'm going to do is just go ahead and click the OK because I don't need to worry about that anymore. And now I'm going to press start and it will finish the applique. It's going to go around one more time and tack this down just to make sure it's extra secure. And then it's going to go ahead and satin stitch the entire thing. But that's how easy it is to create your own applique alphabet with the software that came with your uh, sewing and embroidery machine, your Husqvarna designer series, if you have it. Oops. It looks like I came unthreaded, so I'm just going to go ahead and reverse my stitches. And re-thread my machine. 